Hello again YouTube! Welcome to another tutorial on using Daikon Forge GUI. Today we're going to be covering more controls such as text boxes, toggles, and drop downs. Let's get started. First, let's create a checkbox. Right click your UI, add control, checkbox. Just like the scroll bar, our checkbox relies on other controls. Right click your checkbox. Add control, slide sprite. This is going to be our background image. Oh, I'll set this at 20 by 20. And for the check mark, right click, control, I'm going to add a sprite. This is the check mark. And let's also add the label. Drag all of these onto the checkbox. Oops. And we can run this to test. And there's your checkbox. Now, let's create a text box. Right click your UI, add a text box. And we'll need to configure some images for this. Take note of this blank texture. Um, this is the blank texture we added in tutorial 1. And this is again used by the text box to render the uh, cursor as well as the current text selection. Oops. And our text box is now ready. And I'll run this to check. And there it is. Uh, also note that text boxes do support copy-paste. So for example, uh, this however will not work in web player builds. I can also copy text from the text box and paste it here. Next, we're going to create a slider. So add the slider control. Let's configure the background track image. And I'm also going, now going to add a sprite for the uh, progress. There's our progress sprite. And 
need to drag that here. Now I want this glowy part to be outside of the track, so I'm going to use a negative padding to achieve that. It's complete. Now you can also set this to stretch mode. I'm going to leave it in fill. Next I'm going to add the uh, thumb texture. Assign that to the slider. And there's your thumb. Run this to test. There's your slider. We're also going to create a progress bar. Just need to assign a background image as well as a progress image. I'll use the same ones I used for the slider. Again, I'm going to use padding to ensure that the uh, glowy parts of that sprite are outside of the track. And set this to fill mode as well. And there's our progress bar. Another very useful control in Daikon Forge GUI is the drop down list. This can be used for, you know, give the user a set of options, such as picking a language or how many bots to fight against. I'm going to set up the background images for this. These are very similar to the uh, button images. I'm going to create a list of options. And there's our drop down. We'll also need to assign a button for the drop down, so let's add that. Again, assign your button images. And to this I'm going to add a sprite for the down arrow. And assign this to your drop down list. And we'll test this. There you go, there's your drop down list. And 
If you have a scroll bar as a prefab, you can also assign that here, and it will use that if the list is too big to be displayed on the screen. Uh, finally, the list blocks offers very similar functionality to the drop-down list, except that the list isn't expanded on a button click. Just set up your background images. And again, you can assign a scroll bar prefab here if you have one. And we'll create a list of options. And I'll select option 0. And run this to test. Or drop down list in front. There you go. And there you go. You've now learned how to create and use all of the essential controls in Daikon Forge GUI. In the next tutorial, I'll cover using the powerful data binding features of DF GUI to bind script properties and tie events together. Thanks for watching.